Hello, hello, good evening. I've missed the perfect light again, look, so I'm getting the old glasses reflections. Ugh, my goodness, maybe if I lean this way, look, it's not so bad. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. We're going to go in again for The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nizrana Farouk. Tonight we're going to go, they're quite short chapters tonight, so we're going to go for 23, 24, 25 and 26. A four chapter extravaganza, a bumper edition, as they would have said in my days. <laughs> anyway, here we go. How much further is Gal? Nawa's face was red and sweaty as she shuffled along next to Chaya. I think we're about halfway there, said Neil. Nawa groaned. Once we're out of the jungle, we'll be okay, said Chaya. I mean, we could hitch a ride on a cart or something then. She looked hopefully at Neil. Yeah, I, sorry, just had a yawn. <laughs> yes, I'm sure we'll find something. It's important to keep moving now and put as much distance as possible between us and where we were seen last. And we need to make up for that whole detour we took, said Chaya. I wish we could have another break, said Na Na said Nawa. I'm dying. Oh, come on, don't be such a wimp, said Chaya. Five minutes, please. Nawa sagged down on a tree stump. Neil glanced at Chaya. Let's give her five minutes. Fine, just five and I'm counting. Chaya picked, up at some, picked at some wild mint leaves while they were waiting and crushed them in her fingers and inhaled their aroma. A squashed looking owl, the colour of dried leaves, roosted in a branch overhead. Neil handed Nawa the pitcher of water he was carrying and she drank greedily. Thank you, she whispered. Wait a minute. Neil held up a hand and listened intently. Oh no. Not again? Chaya pricked up her ears. All she heard was the twitch of the owl and rustling of leaves. They're here, said Neil. Come on now, we need to get up. Chaya looked back. They could only see about thirty feet behind them. I don't hear anything, she said. Trust me, they're here. They've got to be close. With a great sound of, of hooves, horsemen erupted into view in a distance. Neil was off like a hare, pulling Nawa by the wrist. Chaya sprinted after them. The jungle was sparse here, the horses easily catching up with them. Chaya vaulted over a fallen tree. She saw Nawa's dress flash ahead and kept up with her. The thuds of horse hooves were getting closer. She knew now was already tired. It was only minutes before they'd be captured, surely. The horsemen were practically at her back. The hoofbeats vibrated three Chaya, pounding into her head. She burst ahead, almost passing Nawa, but slowed down for her. She couldn't even see Neil anywhere. Where's Neil? Chaya screamed. Nawa looked around in terror, but kept on ahead. The horsemen seemed to have divided, some of them going off in another direction. Chaya looked around wildly. A group of horsemen were chasing something on the far left. They disappeared from sight as she, as she pounded after Nawa, a small army of guards at their back. Chaya and Nawa were alone in a jungle, being chased by the king's guards, and Neil was gone. <clears throat> Chaya skirted through a thick banyan tree, gaining a few seconds as the horsemen went round. She kept Nawa in sight. There was no way she was going to lose her as well. A great roaring noise ahead made Nawa pull up and whip round to face Naya. The men were closing in behind them. The horses snarled and the men's uniforms glinted, spears pointing towards the girls. Chaya grabbed Nawa and pulled her forward. It's okay, I know what that noise is. She recognised the sound of water. There was probably a waterfall up ahead. Come on! A warm spray hit Chaya as she ran on with Nawa. Behind them, the men got closer. There was a rank, leathery smell from the horses. Puffs of dust in the air and ahead of them, from somewhere they couldn't yet see, mists of water. They rounded the corner and there it was. A gigantic waterfall, crashing and roaring. Curtains of pure wa white water gushed down, falling far below into the aquamarine pool. The girls were drenched as soon as they stepped on the ledge. They were cornered. From behind them came the gallopers of horses as the men rounded the bend. Chaya looked down into the pool. It was almost circular at the bottom, broad and clear, before thinning into a long strip of churning river. There was only one option. The pool looked deep enough. Jump now! She screamed over the roaring water. Now I stared at her in fright, her hair hanging in wet strings around her face. No! She shrieked, her voice swallowed by the crashing of water. The horsemen approached slowly, wearing smug expressions. N now is safe! Yelled Chaya. Now listen to me! 
But now I didn't react. She stared wildly from the men back to the waterfall again. They couldn't get caught now. The king would have them put to death at, death at once. Chaya reached out and pushed Nawa into the waterfall. Nawa's scream died on her lips as she tipped down into the abyss of crashing water. Chaya jumped in after her. She felt herself whistle through the air before plunging into the water below and slicing down into its cool, swirling depths. The deafening roar muted as she plummeted to the sandy bottom. She kicked hard and surfaced quickly into the rumble and spray, looking around for an hour through hair plastered across her eyes. The current pulled her down a river with a gushing water. Eventually, she was spat into a narrow stream of water. But where was an hour? The water was fast flowing, but the river was narrow here and the banks were fairly close. Chaya looked up and and saw the ledge that jumped from high above her. It would take at least half an hour for the men and their horses to find their way down to land. Something brownish pushed past her down river, and a cold fear seized Chaya. A crocodile? Here? She struck out towards the shore, hitting her palms on rocks as she struggled against the flow. The brown thing rushed ahead, and Chaya saw a white hand loll up to the side. She squinted at it through the mist. It wasn't a crocodile. It was Nower. Chaya struck out towards her. Why wasn't Nawa making for the shore? Nawa! She screamed. Nawa! A memory came back to her. Is it deep? Nawa had asked about the river. Her screaming on top of Ananda. He's going straight for the water. And she had stayed on his back the whole time they'd swum in a river. Nawa was scared of water and probably couldn't swim. And Chaya had just pushed her down an 80 foot waterfall. Chaya thrashed towards Nawa. She would save her if it was the last thing she did. The water surged and crashed around her. She fought to close the distance between them. She had always been a strong swimmer, but the river was rough and wild. Nawa! She yelled again. Nawa! But Nawa didn't respond. Her body flopped ahead in the waves. Was she even conscious? Chaya felt a stab of fear. She kicked out furiously. Nawa, I'm coming! The gap between them was wider than ever. It was it was useless. Neil was missing, probably still in the jungle area where they'd jumped, maybe captured by the king's men, and Nawa was dying in the water. It was all her fault, again and again and again. It was all because of her. She kicked and thrashed and swam towards Nawa. She was getting close, so close now, Chaya could almost reach out and touch her. Chaya launched herself at Nawa, grabbing at her clothes as they hurtled along. Nawa was conscious, but barely. Her eyes showed a flicker of recognition, but she was too exhausted to move. Chaya struggled to tug Nawa ashore, but she wasn't helping. She slumped like a dead weight in Chaya's arms. Nawa, we need to get to the shore. Please, work with me. She grunted as she fought against the current to drag Nawa to the bank. Rocky ledges sparkled, speckled the sandy banks of the river. Chaya tried to lift Nawa onto one of them. She shoved Nawa upwards towards the flattish rock. She had to get Nawa out of the water and onto land. Chaya felt her strength fading away. The sun burned at her head and spots swam in front of her eyes. She had to save Nawa. If Nawa fell back into the water, Chaya wouldn't have the strength to help her again. She gave one last heave and rolled Nawa onto the ledge where she moaned and lay still. Chaya tried to hoist herself after Nawa, but her arms had seized up. The brightness of the day dimmed into black shadows, and the last thing she saw was the water closing over her face as she fainted backwards into the water. <laughs> Gosh, I need to bum my head on the guitar then. <laughs> Chaya was in a deep sleep. Everything was peaceful here. The sound of birdsong mingled with the swishing of leaves and gush of water. Then something thick and warm wrapped itself around Chaya's waist and she was lifted high into the air. Her body made com contact with something hard and was shaken awake. Chaya's clothes and hair were soaked and clinging to her. Her cheek was pressed against a flat rock. She opened her mouth and vomited out water over and over again until she felt light and worn out. She opened her eyes. The river lay in front of her, swirling in white. Above her, the blue sky arced over the horizon. A large butterfly with black and white markings on translucent wings fluttered past its shadow, crossing her face as it went. Was this real, or had she drowned? If she had, she deserved it. Neil was gone, and thanks to her, Nawa was alone too. All of them lost in Serendib's jungle. A chilly wind swept her wet body and she shivered. Her arms stung from all the cuts over them. Chaya lifted her head and looked down on herself. Her tattered clothes clung to her and an enormous shadow fell across her legs. That shadow, there was something familiar about it. 
Chaya lifted herself up onto her elbows, wincing as she did so. She turned to look behind her. There, his huge tusks, looming over her, stood Ananda. <gasps> he didn't go back to the king's car uh, palace after all. He stayed in the jungle and now he's found her. I wonder if he's found Nawa and Neil as well. I nearly had a sneaky look ahead. I won't, I won't, I won't spoil it. But look how close. Oh my goodness. We're nearly through it now. Look. Oh, but billions of other books to read yet. All right. Okay. Have a good evening. I'll see you tomorrow for chapter 27 and 28.